everyone. This is Graham at TheRecordingRevolution.com, and welcome to another 5 Minutes to a Better Mix, where we're looking at 31 mixing tips in 31 days. And today I want to talk to you about what I call the 24-track mindset. And it's simply this. I literally try to reduce the number of tracks in a session I'm mixing to 24 or fewer. This is not always possible, but it is my goal every single time. Why 24? Well, there's this magical number, if you want to say it, where 24 seems to give you plenty of tracks to do a lot, to have a pretty complex session, but it's also a great cutoff for, okay, everything beyond 24 tracks probably isn't that necessary to making the mix sound great. It's probably just candy icing on the cake, extra goodness. And so literally, if I can limit myself in my DAW, since I'm not limited, every DAW seemingly has unlimited tracks, which means as long as your computer can handle it, you can keep adding tracks. Why do that if it only just distracts you? It distracts me. I don't know about you. I might not be the brightest mixer in the room, but I cannot seem to focus on more than 24 tracks at a time. And my mixes suffer. They don't sound better with more tracks. In fact, the opposite is true. The fewer tracks I have, if they stay under that 24 track threshold, I'm able to get a better drum sound, better vocal sound, more intentional panning, uh, the EQ comes together much faster, I have more clarity in my mixes, and I have more fun doing a mix, and I'm finding that's the case with a lot of other people I talk to that work in this world. They may get 100 plus tracks, but they do their darndest to reduce it down. So what I thought I'd show you is an example of a track that I even recorded that I have more than 24 tracks, but I don't need all these tracks available, and I'll show you exactly why. Here I have, I think I counted 31 tracks. Now this is a drum bus, don't count that, that's just an aux. But all these tracks that are blue, and then that bass, and that piano track, those are about 31 tracks. You can see them all here. Uh, and there's a point in the song where almost all of them are playing at the same time, okay? So it's building up here. some drums, some guitars, a few gang vocals at the bottom. And here comes some more, right here. So even with those 31 tracks, at that moment, which I think has the most tracks happening in one time of the song, there's maybe 29, maybe 28 actually playing at once. So I don't actually have 31 tracks all playing at once in this particular song. But even then, I need to reduce it down. There's no point in me having all of these vocal tracks open. So what do I do? Well, to mix this song, this is what I would do. A couple of things. Uh, I have two kick drum tracks. I mic the kick inside and outside. I don't need two faders. So what I would probably do is create a mono bus called kick drum and route those two tracks to the mono bus so that I can still blend the two tracks and get the sound of the inside and the outside mic, but then hide the original two tracks and only process one kick drum track. Okay, that cuts down one track. I don't need to be processing two kick drum tracks. I can still get the sound and all the uniqueness, but process one. Also, these uh, ooze, I did like vocal pads here. You can see these tracks here. There's six tracks of me layering some ooze. Those are awesome, but I don't need six tracks of that. So what I would do is bounce that down to one stereo track of the ooze. I'd have to pick my levels. I'd have to pan them the way I want initially, but you're gonna have to do that at some point. You might as well do that before you mix, and then I can inactive or hide the tracks, and I don't need them. And if I ever need to go back, I can pull them back up and readjust, of course. I'm not deleting the tracks. I'm just making them inactive to save CPU power and hiding them and reducing six tracks down to two. So I'll have eliminated four tracks there. I've eliminated a kick drum track up top. And really, if you think about the stereo track as one track, then I've really eliminated more than that. So that's what I try to do is reduce the tracks down now before I mix. And then what I would have is a lot fewer tracks to work with. Um, I probably would come under that 24 track threshold, then I'm ready to mix. But here's something to consider also. Let's say you can't physically reduce the tracks down much more than what you have. What I try to do is at least identify the 24 core tracks in my mind. Things like tambourine, not that core. 
I'm not going to worry about it that much. I might put it off to the side, bring up the fader, and call it a day. Uh, things like a random pad that's going to show up in verse 13, not that big of a deal. It's part of the sound. It's meant to be there. I'm not going to make it a core track. So I'm going to dump it to the side and visualize what are my core 24 tracks and focus mostly on those. And anything else, I can blend it in, add it to taste, but I'm not going to stress over those small side filler tracks. I'm going to focus on my core 24. This will help you mix faster. This will help you stay focused. This will help you deliver better sounding mixes instead of getting lost on all the tracks. We just... We have too many tracks these days, guys. Think about it like you're mixing a live show. Just make the band sound great and call it a day. Hope that helps. Again, this is Graham at TheRecordingRevolution.com. We'll see you on tomorrow's video.